Hey, YouTube. I'll bet you didn't expect me to get back here so soon. But I am. I wanted to close off tonight with um, some information that I think is very valuable to all of us. First of all, I want to remind everybody that there is going to be a rare blue moon Friday night. That's the 31st. So if you have children, you know, this kind of stuff can be really exciting. It is a Friday night. Perhaps you can let them stay up a little later and let them see the blue moon. That old saying, once in a blue moon, a lot of kids wonder what that means. The other thing that I wanted to say is I was listening to a video tonight done by my friend Rose and she was discussing how bots get lost in communication and try to control and you'd have to watch it. I'll put her link down below. I thoroughly enjoy going on these walks with her. She goes walking barefooted and just shares her thoughts. Refreshing. Very refreshing. Anyway, um, when I finished watching, I got to thinking about how, you know, many of us get here, get on here on YouTube and we try and share knowledge or information that we've gained. And I say gained because I don't think any of us that uh, really want the truth out share anything that we haven't researched. You know, when we hear something, we just don't copy other people and say, oh, hey, guess what? It, this isn't a rumor mill. We spend a lot of hours researching and checking things out, delving into articles and news and stuff to get to the truth. And I've told you that before. You know, I've said that before. But the reason, why, why do we do that? Why do we do that? For starters, we have problems. And the problems aren't my problems. You know, it, it's not a personal thing. It's not your problem. And it's not just his problem or her problem. These problems belong to all of us. You know, if we can empower the human mind with, with knowledge, then it doesn't matter who tries to control us. If we can just get the knowledge, it doesn't matter who tries to control us. They won't be able to control us because we will know the truth. We live in a world of deception. Everywhere we look, we're being lied to. We're being misled. A line divides us. A division. We have on this side the people that know. The people that are spending the hours, the days, the weeks, the months, the years researching, paying attention gathering up information to validate the fact that this is happening, whatever this is. Whether it's the chemtrails in the sky, the radiation, earthquakes, abnormal storms, destruction, things that raise a brow, things that are abnormal, that go against our normal cycles. <coughs> the knowing people are on the left side and the people that for whatever reason have no clue or refuse to believe those that prefer to stay in a, a place of um, unknowing you know, the ones that choose to ignore are on the other side. 
And between us, there is this big line, this wall. And the wall's very high. Occasionally, one of us will get across. And we'll be able to touch people. And we'll be able to lean, lead them back over the wall so that they, too, can research and find more validation to the things that we're telling them. But they have to want to do that. You know, the knowing people try to share what they have found to be true. The ones in denial, for whatever reason, spend more time arguing against the facts, against the truth, than it would take them to research and find out for themselves the stuff that the knowing are telling them is true. A hundred percent truth. Now that doesn't mean any of us know everything. For crying out loud, we'd be lucky if 50% of the world's population knew enough. Pink Sapphire on her channel did a video today that uh, didn't surprise me, but it was shocking. You know, we have a lot of people that are denying that our government is uh, behind the things that are happening. It's hard to believe when we've been raised, you know, with the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, saluting our flag and being good Americans or uh, good citizens to any other country. It's hard for a person to look at their country's government and raise a brow of suspicion. Because speaking as an American, when we look at the government and we go, well, you know, I don't think they're doing that right. I think perhaps this is wrong. We begin to feel guilty because we're not being good citizens. Well, there's proof all over the place that, in fact, our government is covering up a lot of things and that they're doing things that are crimes against humanity. Proof everywhere, and I know that's a heavy statement. Crimes against humanity, but it's a fact. And not only is it a fact, but they have put this information out in laws and bills that we, for whatever reason, have not paid any attention to. One good example of this is Public Law 105-85, dated November 18th, 1997. You heard me right. Dated November 18th, 1997. There is a portion in this, well, there's a lot in this law, but there's one specific spot in this law that will curdle your blood. And I'm going to put the link to it and the information that you need as far as where to look to read this down in the description box. That's where I put all the links on the videos that I do and the topics that I cover. But I'll put it down below and you can go and read this for yourself. Anyway, on Pink's channel, she did a video regarding, and I'll read the title to you here, the tar title of the article, The Feds Cover Up, The Feds Cover Up of Radioactive Contamination on San Francisco's Treasure Island. Did you get that? 
The Fed's cover-up of radioactive contamination on San Francisco's Treasure Island. I'm going to put the link down below. Uh, basically what this article is about. Pink will cover the entire thing for you. But um, for decades, the United States government has buried its nuclear sins on Treasure Island under layers of institutional ignorance. And now the lies are finally being uncovered. She'll go through the entire article, and it's a hair raiser, especially considering that there are people um, housing there, there is apartment buildings there, there are schools that are sitting right on top of this mess. And it's been covered up by the feds. Another thing that I a link that I'll put down below is the Gulf is a legal biological military operation. The Gulf is a legal biological military operation. The article starts out what do 50 USC 1520A 50 USC 1512, Public Law 10585, and 483 U.S. 669 have in common. They are U.S. codes, U.S. congressional, and U.S. Supreme Court means by which the U.S. Department of Defense was given the legal federal authority to conduct the synthetically bioengineered experiment in the Gulf of Mexico to eliminate the BP oil and gas. It goes on to say that this has resulted in the legal deaths and disease of human, animal, and plant life. The deterioration of food and water and the damaging alterations of environment. While this was a legal federal government act, such insanity is a far cry from being moral or lawful. Now again, I'm going to read that sentence. Remember we've already discussed Treasure Island, San Francisco's Treasure Island, and the federal cover-up. This is regarding the Gulf and BP oil spill. While this was a legal federal government act, such in insanity is a far cry from being moral or lawful. Once again, the civilian population in America has been the object of a biological experiment. Now I'm going to remind you again that I'm sharing with you a uh, public law 10585 and I highly recommend that everybody go read it because when they brought out pub public law 10585 I'd never I'd never heard of it before have you have any of you heard of it just by going public with it with it being a public law they say that we've given them permission to do this We've given them permission to spray chemtrails. And if you don't know what's in those chemtrails, research it. Go check it out yourself. You can listen to the video that I did regarding it. You better sit down before you watch it. But I can guarantee you if you spend just a few minutes, you'll find the information online the chemicals 
the viruses, the disease, the blood, the aluminum, the heavy metals, and the list goes on and on and on that's inside those chemtrails. But we've given them permission to do this because they had public law 10585 setting there, protecting them. Another link that I'm going to put down below is just go home. Call for a U.S. Canadian general strike from August 31st to September 4th. I'm putting the link down. It's on aircraft.org. They are calling for a strike. This is a holiday weekend. And I believe that I read that that's why they're picking this weekend. But in the name of lasting peace, prosperity, and the very future of all our lives, they're calling out for U.S. Canadian nationwide general strike. We have run out of time financially and envi environmentally. Our countries and our entire planet are in extremis. It is way past the ninth hour. The dots connecting this are already well known. So I recommend that you guys check out the links that I'm putting down below. And uh, friends, with all these things that are going on, and it would take us hours and hours to cover everything in one video, which we're not allowed to do. We're limited on time. But if we were to cover everything in one video, or be able to, there would be so many topics that are hair, hair raisers right now. And... What I'd like to say to everybody is we're focusing on all this stuff. I told somebody tonight in a comment that if we can just keep the words going and keep reminding everybody and keep talking about it, and the more, more we talk about it, the more videos we put out, eventually, eventually, our words are going to get to the right person. They're going to reach somebody that has an answer to all this. And I really believe that. But in the meantime, while we're doing this, friends, prepare at home. Prepare for a false flag or a catastrophic event. Take care of your families. You know, we can put food away on shelves. And the time that it will set there on the shelves is going to be very limited. Unless you're extremely wealthy and you can go out and buy up a bunch of food. Most people can't. I know we certainly can't. Get, get yourself prepared to do gardening. You know, uh, find ways that you can garden. Collect seeds. Put together a seed bank for yourself. And be careful that you get seeds that are not GMO. There's another article that uh, my husband found regarding GMO and the human health. Not a good thing. Doctors are waking up to this, too. But you need to be able to plant a garden. You need to be able to figure out how to get water if you needed water. Because if the grid went down, you know, all of our water systems are run by pumps. And those pumps are electrical. Find ways. Get your family together. Get your, your uh, friends and neighbors, if you have to. Get a group together. Do whatever it is that you can do to find ways to have your own uh, self-sufficient 
means of survival for whatever period of time. You know, if their grid was down for six months, are you prepared for that? Take time to think about this. There's all kinds of information. Don't worry about... Um, trying to stock up as much as you are concerned about being able to create. Like building, making, planting, harvesting, drying, canning. We need to really start focusing on these things. You know, we're looking at what's happening right now down in Louisiana and and Mississippi and the evacuation because of a dam that's ready to be be breached oh I'm not gonna say that it's a natural thing <clears throat> I'll put another link down below about that but take time to give this stuff thought and this isn't to, to make anybody afraid there is absolutely no reason to be afraid the only people that should be afraid are the people that are denying any of this is real. I don't know if what they're on or what they're thinking because it's it's all here. It's right in front of us. We see it. It's very real. But through paying attention and realizing we have no reason to fear. None at all. So I'll tell you what, friends, I'll work with you anytime. You know, we can do this. We can get through hard times. Our ancestors did. My great-grandma did. She come over on a wagon train. And uh, it was hard times. She told me stories. You know, they lived in a lean-to for quite a while with several children until my great, uh, pardon me, my great great grandpa until he was able to build a shanty cabin for the family. You know there's sometimes you have to look at what's happening and the possibilities as going back to simplicity and a little simplicity isn't going to hurt any of us. Call it a humbling. Just take the time to prepare, just in case. And what, what's it going to hurt? If nothing ever happens in your area, like it's happened in several, at least you have the knowledge. Perhaps you'll be able to help somebody else where it has happened. Give that some thought. And it's time for this one to go to bed. It is late. I love you all. Big hugs. And don't forget, there's always hope. And if we just work together, the hope grows. Love you bunches. Catch you guys next time. Have a good one.